What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. I know Wrestling Mania is going on. Mike is up there in Pennsylvania with DJ and uh, um, and, and or BJ or I can't remember if it's BJ or DJ and and crew and stuff on the trip that was supposed to be with Rashid and we definitely miss my buddy Rashid up there and wish that he were there at Wrestling Mania. So you know I, I get it. Yeah, we're, we're not worried about football here too much, but you know I'm I'm sitting here in my mind. I, I just got back to the Red Brick House. Shout out to my man, Angry Cowboys fan, as well as Law Nation and everybody else who have kind of clamped back at 105 The Fan, uh, Sean, as a matter of fact, Sean and RJ, for literally trashing our players. It, it, this is kind of funny to me because, see, what I, I'm trying to tell you, so I'll actually say I'm happy I've moved up from being a moron to us YouTubers, us YouTubers, that are now actually Cowboys Mafia. I'm the motherfucking fucking one who calls the shots. <laughs> and you better pay me the respect that I gave your brother or we're going to have a problem. A bad one. A bad one. Now get the fuck out of here. Yeah, like Tony Soprano said. So here, it, this is this is sad but true. You know, before it used to be the Joneses that did their dirty work, that they would be the ones that would be kind of like, you know, Dak, you, you, you know, Dak's got to understand that, you know, you, you can't take up the whole pie. And I honestly and truly believe that the Cowboys getting rid of Amari Cooper wasn't solely because they had problems with him and the COVID shot and all that stuff, that some of that was a message sent out to Dak Prescott. To let him know, if you're going to take the big piece of pie, you're going to go ahead and have to do it by your damn self. As a way to control him. And this pattern goes on. Now, I'm going to say, I saw Micah Parsons today. And from Micah that I saw his rookie year to the Micah I saw now, he's got some serious guns right now. Micah looks like he's put on more weight from last season to this year. And he looks like, hey, you know, he's in fantastic shape. And I'm going to say for Dak Prescott, for uh, Micah Parsons and CD, that those guys going into this offseason, knowing that Dak is already working out, we know that Micah, we saw some workout videos and stuff from a couple days ago where he's working with the elite trainers and things, that having these guys, unlike when Des Bryant was hurt in the offseason or Tony Romo's got back surgery and things like that or D-Law's getting his shoulder worked on, these guys are working out and getting stronger right now. Dak and, and, and crew are out there busting their ass already working out. OTAs don't start for another uh, week and a half. But they're already getting stronger, faster, better, and getting the mindset of going through. And so it kind of bugs me about this whole thing that Micah Parsons is getting thin. You know, I can understand if you were out there racing a Lamborghini, crashing into walls, that it's getting thin. Or if you're out in a bar and things like that, and, you know, you're in bar fights and stuff. Or you're, heaven forbid, arrested for doing something else. I don't see how a guy who does an hour-long podcast, I think he's had 30 of them so far total, you know, one day a week, as opposed to hanging out in the club getting tipsy, is really a distraction. I don't see what Micah Parsons has done. He hasn't called out the organization and everything else, although, I mean, he has basically said, yeah, I'd like to get some help. I guess if that's wearing thin on you, then maybe you need to look inside yourself and see that the guy who's out here doing everything that he can to help you win is asking for help. But listen to this for a second, because we're talking about trades here, okay? Trading Dak. You can be traded for two first-round picks under the franchise tag. What, what realistic discussions do you think 
the Cowboys are having over that possibility? Is it less than 1% that they would even think about trading him? My angle on this, Sean, is which team wants to give you two first-round picks and give him $40 million? Don't forget about GM and head coach job security. If you think you have a quarterback for the next 10 years, you're happy to pay him $35 million, and you're fine with giving up two first-round picks. Rolling the dice on Tua T. Rolling the dice okay. on Herbert yeah. is still a 50% gamble. And, you know, you have your Indianapolis's out there. You have the Raiders with two first-round picks. You have the, the Dolphins with two first-round picks. If they like Dak Prescott a lot more than Tua T or Herbert, then then I would do it. I think the Cowboys view Dak Prescott as an elite person. Yeah. And, and a good player. Yes. And, and I think they're going to end up paying him extremely well for both of those traits. But I must say, if, if you want to give me two – if you want to give me a premium number one or two premium number ones and and let me go try it again with another quarterback, that because I think Dak is an elite person but not an elite player, if I'm the Cowboys, I'm very interested in that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So that, of course, was four years ago. Now, enter this whole situation that has kind of set off a firestorm we possibly get for Micah Parsons. Now, I'll start with you, Sean, because you seem very eager to talk about this I'm topic. I'm not eager. I don't. I like to go into Friday smooth. I don't want the, the Cowboys Mafia uh, to sit Cowboys there. Cowboys Mafia. Good people, because I don't want to give them more attention. Mm-hmm. I, when I see them in person, I'll give them plenty of attention. Oh. Uh, since they like to type and tweet so big and bad. If I ever see them, if they ever get credential to the Whoa. things that we go to. Whoa. A credential Whoa. flex. Look at that. <laughs> what a flex. If they ever get facially recognized. Um, <laughs> now, God, do you have I, Joe Tran's number? But I don't want to. <laughs> Both of them. I don't want to get. I, I don't want to get <sighs> in trouble. But I'm, a, I'm about to. What? What? If you if you found out they said, hey, we're going to move on from Micah. We need the draft capital. Yeah. We're just we're operating under the assumption where they go. We need cost effective players. Yep. Got to make a move. What is the return in general? You had to say, I want to get this back for Micah for me to say, okay, you at least got the value for him. I got to get two ones or a one and two twos. Um, something like that. It's got to be two ones or a one and two twos. And I am the king of draft capital return on this. It's show. coming. It's you coming. Know these idiots. You nailed third. Justin Fields. Uh, you know, I, was I, sh- wrong. I should have said Diggs. I don't understand why it was. Oh my God, a rip off. Stephon Diggs was never getting a first round pick. But for me to feel okay about the compensation, two firsts, one and two twos, or something that would equate to that value on the chart. Choppy, what and is that? It would be a high. I need, a, I need one of those second round picks high up, real high. Mm-hmm. It's, it's two ones, it's the Khalil Mack compensation. I'm glad you brought that up. The best comp you can find in recent history for what it would be like to move on from Michael Parsons. Michael Parsons is 25. Why aren't you doing this topic about C.D. Lamb? Moving on. Uh, I mean, we can absolutely do it. You're going to have to pay Michael Parsons more money. I think Michael Parsons is going to cost you more. If you're looking at cost efficiency and, look, if we're being honest, who do I think is a better locker room presence for them? It's C.D. Lamb, and I don't think it's close. Uh, I think here's the sentence I'll say. Web team. Take, take Here it comes. Off the Here it comes. <laughs> take off the rest of the season. Here it comes. Don't listen. Don't listen. Yeah. Come on. Just, I, just pretend like you're on G-Bag for a little bit. I, uh, <laughs> I have heard from way too many people this offseason, way too many. I'm talking about at least, at least four different people that Micah has worn thin there. Hmm. Now, I don't know how much – is 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 true and how much it actually hurts i don't know whether this is the behavior of a typical superstar i don't know how damaging it is but all i do know is this i've heard from way 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 too from way too many people if micah parsons was out of there there'd be a decent amount of people inside the ford center at the star in frisco smiling or breathing a sigh of relief Hmm. that is my hot take statement that to me is really close to you know i have to say that i've talked to numerous people as well 
And I have to say that some of the bullshit that we've been hearing from 105 The Fan and from the Joneses is kind of wearing thin on us fans as well. You have to be freaking crazy to have a guy come out the box and is able to do the things that he's doing. Now, when you talk about how, you know, Joey Bosa and, you know, those guys and stuff are doing, take a look at some of the people that they have around them. Take a look at the whole team. Because, see, we're, we're doing Micah Parsons the same way we do Dak Prescott. We say you're a superstar, but you're selfish because you're not playing elite in two positions. How freaking crazy is this bullshit that we get? That you literally saying, yeah, you're playing great as a defensive end, but you know what? You're, you're not great as a linebacker, and you're not putting in the effort to do two positions. This is the bullshit of deflecting where the real issues are. And it's a damn shame. When you look at Lawrence Taylor, because this is where people say, well, he's not Lawrence Taylor. Take a look at all of the players that were on those defenses with Lawrence Taylor. It wasn't just Lawrence Taylor and a bunch of journeymen players. He had people on the other side that they had to worry about as well. And here's where I say, and as people say, well, why did the Cowboys let so, so many talented people go? When you have a guy who's requiring doubles and triple teams, those other guys should be feasting. Those other guys should be, you know, double-digit sack. Somebody else should be a double-digit sacker. Somebody else should be, a, especially as many points as our offense scores. But we ain't got that. We ain't got that. And when you only have one elite person, teams can take you out of the game, people. People, they can take you out of the game. If you think that you're going to go ahead and get rid of a Micah Parsons and turn around and draft, you know, more cost-effective guys to do the job, you are freaking nuts. You are freaking nuts. And see, most teams, when they strike gold with some good players, they try and surround them with more good players to make a run. Only the Dallas Cowboys say we don't have money to pay and put people around them. And that goes back to the Joneses. That goes back to them not figuring out how to use the cap the proper way. And instead of them owning up to their own shit, they point the fingers at the people that are actually making a difference on the field. Yeah, it, it really irks me, and I know it irks a lot of the Cowboys Nation as well. <sighs> yeah, shit stinks. Hope y'all are having a great night, and get back to your wrestling mania.